Let's talk about custom backups in OCI. So a lot of times you want to use the managed backups and that's perfectly fine. They give retention up to 60 days, uh, but you don't have access on the backup uh, buckets in the object storage, so they are hidden. Maybe you want just a little bit more control overall with your backup. So that's where the OCI uh, cloud database backup module comes into play. So you can con just uh, download that, configure it, and then uh, maybe even use lifecycle policies. So then the backups are stored in object storage bucket, which you can access, and then the backup module can configure lifecycle policies so that after a certain number of days, then the backups are moved to archive storage, and then you save on costs. Obviously, it impacts on the restore time, so it takes a little bit longer to restore, but I think the benefits on saving, saving some uh, Money, money with that is is obviously useful. Uh, it doesn't require much, so there's some prereqs uh, for the lifecycle policies. We have to have a uh, IAM policy in place for the object storage service, so it can modify the objects uh, in in that bucket or in that compartment. And then we need a uh, little bit information, like we need the API key for our backup user, and then we also need some I. I information like uh, compartment OSIT, tenancy OSIT, and all, all that stuff. So not, not much. And once, once you have them, it's really quick to configure. So let's take a look on how to uh, configure it. So I've created already the policy uh, in the identity policies, and then have this cloud backup module policy. And it's simple as this allow service, object storage, uh, DAS region, identifier to manage objects family in compartment. So that's that's because uh, we want the object storage uh, to move the backups after a certain period of time from standard tier to archive tier. And the other thing uh, we needed to do is to uh, modify the user. So if I go to my own user, uh, modify or add the API key, I've already added the API key, but you could add it here, API keys, add API key, and then you could just uh, generate it here or then upload your own. Uh, and then after that, it would display you all the tenancy OSIT, uh, user OSIT, which you can see from here, configuration file as well. So I could just uh, take these and then I'll, I'll use them in a sec once we configure the cloud backup module. Uh, the documentation, like there's a documentation available uh, here. Uh, see this one so under this using oracle database backup cloud service and the cloud service i think that was the old like gen 1 service or pre gen 1 service what they had uh, so the documentation is in my opinion a little bit misleading it could be uh, named again since i don't think a lot of folks use anymore anything else apart from the actual cloud database backup module so there's a section for OCI, and then all the prereqs what you need are defined here, and then uh, also how to how to actually run it, and that's what we'll we'll check next. And there's also a download link. Uh, so this uh, database cloud backup module, the link is in the description of this uh, video, so you can just uh, get it from there. And after you download it, uh, you need to move it to the a server uh, and this time I'm, I'm just uh, obviously uploading it to the database server so since I can directly access it I'm gonna upload first the uh, file to my cloud shell and from cloud shell uh, I'm just gonna upload it to the uh, database server so I can access it with the Oracle user so let's start doing the configuration so I moved the uh, cloud backup module zip file now to database server. Uh, if you don't know from cloud shell, you have the cloud shell menu here. You can just click it, then you can upload files to cloud shell. Obviously from cloud shell, you need to create that private endpoint and then maybe using SCP uh, to transfer the zip file to database server. So I sudoed myself to Oracle user. I have the uh, file here. I'm just gonna run unzip. Uh, so it's going to unzip two folders. We are just going to look on the OPC installer. And 
under there you can see two folders so the opc installer folder is for the older gen 1 backups and then we need to use the oci installer in this case so i'm gonna go there and then we should have the jar file here we can take a look on the readme uh, readme just have some generic information on the prereqs and then then also so, uh, about the arguments like when you are running it so if we take a look on the file okay you need the api signing key all that stuff java and then it has all these uh, arguments here uh, that you might might need and we are not using all of them but i'll i'll just uh, copy and paste the the ones what we are going to use and then get get it installed so i just paste the command here so this is the installation java jar oci install then i define uh, the object storage uh, region basically so you can see the url here pointing to toronto region and i have the api key fingerprint uh, user OSIT, tenancy OSIT, then the wallet directory basically where the backup module stores the object storage credentials so it's going to be on this folder just using the default one and also where the cloud backup module library is stored so using the default location here as well then enabling i'm going to enable the archival so after certain period of time which i define here archive after backup zero days so once the backup hits ob uh, object storage then within the next 24 hours the backup is gonna be moved to archive storage and then retain after restore so if i would do a restore from archive storage then the backup would be retained 24 hours uh, in the uh, in the standard tier before uh, getting out from there and then i define also the bucket so i have created this bucket tfgdb backup uh, earlier if i wouldn't have it then uh, basically object store uh, the backup module would create it in object storage so let's press enter and see that it gets installed so validates the credentials yeah bucket there and that's pretty much it so now the backup module is installed and next we are going to take a look on the Arman side uh, what we need to do there to enable enable the backups and then we can run our first backup so i have the documentation open here now and it describes like what the uh, Arman commands i need to run so let's just follow the documentation this time and basically i need to connect to Arman, and then i need to run this uh, channel configuration so you can see we configure the library and then the parameters uh, the configuration file so that's uh, those files are from the location uh, which we specified in the installation so i'm just gonna go to here i'm already logged to rman just gonna paste the command so you can see the library is now on the database home slash lib and then the configuration file is under dbs so those uh, we can just configure it now and then let's see those other parameters uh, what we need to configure so Uh, default device type and then some other parameters let's just copy them all and run them there that's the easiest for this test case uh, there we go now encryption on as well and then then we can run the actual backup so you can see for each session we need to run the encryption and then we can run the backup so let me take the uh, command here so encryption first there we go and then let's run the backup command and now 
you can see it starts the backup and then this backup should be written on the bucket which we specified so we can take a look on on that once this backup finishes it should run it's an empty database so it should take uh, just a couple of minutes to complete and then we can take a look on the on the bucket itself what's there and then how the archival works so the backup finished uh, didn't take too long uh, since it was uh, mostly just an empty database so now I can go to the bucket what I created so let's go here at the dfgdb backup bucket here uh, and when I created, I just used normal settings, so I didn't specify any lifecycle policy. So anything just standard here uh, in a compartment uh, which you want to use. So if I go here, let's first take a look on the lifecycle policy rules. So this is something the Cloud Backup module creates automatically based on the uh, values you, you specify. So this, this is a zero days rule. So like I said, within like 24 hours, once you take the backup, then uh, the backups will be moved to archive tier. It excludes the XML files, which are the metadata, metadata files for uh, Cloud Backup module. So those are excluded. They are very small on size, so it really shouldn't matter if they are there on a standard tier or not. Uh, then if we go to the objects, I have these folders here, what the Cloud Backup module creates. And the actual backup files are here under file chunk. And if we go here, it has the database backup piece. And then actually two folders, uh, one for yesterday and then one for today, which I just ran. So the yesterday's one is actually already moved to archive tier. So I just wanted to have that there so I can quickly show that as well. If I go here on the backup uh, files, Further in the path, I'll see the one file here, uh, which is taken by Arman, and you can see the size and then storage tier here as well. So it's on the standard tier. And if we go uh, in similar fashion on yesterday's folder, there we can see that the uh, storage tier is on archive tier. So this gives you a little bit more flexibility on which tier the backup files are and how it impacts on the cost. Just remember when you are restoring the database, it takes longer to take the backup from archive tier. So you have to balance that. Maybe you keep like uh, backups up to seven days or 30 days on standard tier, and then you move those, uh, those out uh, to archive tier. And then maybe you only store like your monthly backups on for a longer period of time. It depends like what your backup policies are within your company or, or where you are working. So always take care of that, that you follow the policies as well. Uh, maybe next time I'll, I'll go through the, how you're gonna restore the database using this, uh, these backups. So if you have a, basically lost your compute VM and then you have a new database and then you have to restore it there. Uh, but let's take a look on that. Next time. So this time we went through how to use the custom backup module and how it's fairly easy to install. Just those, those prereqs, creating the API key for your user, obviously having the policies for the user, uh, then having those policies, IAM policies, that uh, the object storage service can modify the lifecycle rules in that compartment where you have the uh, backup uh, bucket. And then installing the backup module which you downloaded installing on the database server then configuring that configuring rman and then just uh, uh, configuring your rman backups and then you can just schedule the backups maybe you have a, like a, something scheduled on cron tab and then you just run rman and you can use that to backup and restore your databases so i like it gives a little bit more flexibility uh, until oracle comes up with the more flexibility on the managed backups and hopefully we'll we'll see that in the future uh, thanks for watching again and hopefully you like the video